I will eat those words um, January, February. Um, but so far, it's been pretty nice. Uh, maybe on our talking this morning about how it's kind of strange that we wake up and we, we look at the temperature and it says 40 degrees, like, hey, it's warm today. Um, yeah. Kind of unusual. It's okay. <laughs> but I think it's totally right? um, okay. As you can tell, we're ready for Christmas. Um, decorations. I was kind of like auditoriums to be decorated. Um, but there's a little more color and life. Oh, they said you should leave it out? Um, or? No, I'd leave it out. Before we kind of get into things, um, I do want to. Yes, I did a big job to Ashley. The amazing amount of work that she did. Hopefully, I won't get in the office and be in trouble. I can't do anything about it. It's just, it's used to it. We get to shop as far as I can tell from my little corner of the backdoor. Ran so well. Um, I didn't obviously know exactly what to expect, um, but it really was amazing uh, the amount of people that we were able to help and, and serve and, and give to um, in, in Christ's name. Amen. Um, the last two weeks we've been talking about putting things into action. I did not plan this out in advance, but it was kind of lucky that the gift shop landed yesterday so because today is our, is our last day um, of this little mini series. And two weeks ago, we talked about <coughs> gratitude. We talked about putting gratitude into action and our thankfulness to God for what He has done for us. We talked about how, that, how that's the motivation for our service. We're not out to, to earn points with God, we're not out to, to earn our salvation. But since Christ came and died, and since we became His, He's already paid that price. Yes. And because He's paid that price, we can serve out of thanksgiving for that gift. Last week, we, last week we talked about faith and putting faith into action. And whereas gratitude was kind of the motivation, faith makes up the foundation for why we serve. Now, if we have all the works in the world, if I do everything, if I do more than anyone else on the planet, but I have no faith, there's really no point in me doing this thing. And if I have all the faith in the world, but it does not do nothing for my life, then James says that faith is dead. It's useless. Yes. And so where gratitude is the motivation... And faith is the foundation. Love is kind of the glue that, that holds it all together. It's what gives everything meaning. What gives it purpose. This is, this is not a, an optional ingredient. This is absolutely necessary. And Paul is very, very clear about this in 1 Corinthians. I feel like if I was, uh, I like to make ice cream. If you, if you don't know that yet, I love to make ice cream. I haven't been able to in a while. But vanilla, chocolate, orange soda, you name it. At one point, I was making so much ice cream that I could tell what, what, was, what other people's ice cream was made of. <laughs> I like ice cream. If I made a batch of ice cream, and I chose not to use, for example, condensed milk. <coughs> not get in up right. If I make chocolate chip cookies and I don't put in chocolate chips, I'm not going to have chocolate chip cookies. If I make a cake without sugar, I'm not going to make a cake. Well, you can call it cake, but... <laughs> But without love, nothing else matters. Paul, Paul states this explicitly in 1 Corinthians 13, 
where he writes, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. In the first part of the sermon today, I want to kind of unpack this and look at what that really looks like. Because these are, these are common verses. Most people will recognize these verses. But when's the last time that we stopped to actually really consider and understand the implications of what Paul is saying? Because when we stop and look at it, it becomes very clear just, just how important this is. He starts off saying, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. It's like if, if I was in, invited to the UN for some reason to, to speak to everyone, and I, and I got up, and I just started preaching in the gospel. Whatever happens, I'm going to preach. And so I start preaching the gospel, and everyone there knows exactly what I'm saying without their interpreter. Pretty impressive. And then Paul says, with the tongues of angels. Now, angels are fundamentally different beings from us. They're spiritual beings created by God who live and worship in his presence. And so Paul says, if I'm speaking with the with the in the language of a being that stands before God in worship, in his presence, and I don't have love, it's useless. Tongues were, were a very kind of sought-after gift in some of the early churches. Paul kind of gets on to them about this sometimes. But it's very, it's very public, it's very seeable gift. Now, some might say, well, I have the gift of organization, which I don't, by the way. Uh, I wish. Uh, but that's, that's not something that, that people really see, necessarily. Tongues is, is really something pretty public. But Paul says, if you do this, and you have this, and you don't have love, there's no point in it. A lot of people here have children. We have two, as you know, Abe and Liam. Both of them, at one point in their lives, decided to make a drum set. And so they got, you know, the spatula or the spoon or the whisk. The whisk is the worst. <laughs> oh my, it, it's not as loud, but it's scratchy. <laughs> so, so they get the spatula or the spoon or the, or the whisk, and they get, they get a pot. And they just sit down in the kitchen floor going, ba 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 Paul says, that's that's how useful it is. It's a kid sitting on a floor, banging on a pot. That's how useless it is. And it gets real annoying about 0. 0.2 seconds in. When, when they raise their hand, it's already irritated. It serves no purpose. <coughs> Verse 2, he says, No, it has a gift of prophecy. And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Think about that. If he has a gift of prophecy, he can tell what is, if he can tell what is coming. If he, if he can look at a group of, group of people and show them where they're wrong and how they need to fix their lives. If he understands the answers, all mysteries and all knowledge. Think about that. The exact hows and whys of the universe being created. How salvation works on the deepest, most fundamental levels. If he understands how, how it all works, how everything fits together, he understands everything. He understands, if he understands the will of God, And 
though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains. If I can walk up to a kid with a broken arm and be like, boop, not broken, gone. If I can, if I can walk into a cancer ward and say, hey, everyone here, you can walk out. And they get up and walk out. If I, if I, if I go over to Mount Everest, I'm like, you know, I don't think you, I don't think you belong there. Go over there, please. And it says, okay, and it sprouts a pair of legs, walks over and plants itself where I told it to. But have not love. I am nothing. Nothing. Useless. Pointless. Zero purpose. He says, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned. If we, if we got home today and said, all right, Danielle, all right, boys, boys, we're going to move out, move out of our rent house into a trailer. We're going to sell both the cars and get an old feeder. We're going to sell all our, sell our computer and TV, and we're going to go with that. We're going to... Everything that we have, we're just going to give it to those need, and give it to the poor, and give it to this, and we'll just live this bottom line. We're going to eat rice and beans the rest of our lives. And if I'm walking down the street, and someone puts a gun to my head and says, do you believe in Christ? I say, yes. And they go, bang. But have not love that promises me nothing. Love is a requirement for action. You might say, well, why would people do any do of these things without love? What, what besides love could prompt someone to do this? Well, greed, popularity, wanting to be seen as holy, wanting to, there's several reasons you could put it in there. All that is useless is that love. Love is the lifeblood of Christian action. You see, our, our, our desire and love for God is essential to our worship, it is essential for our action to be true. Speaking to Israel, God would say that they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And it was, it was true. God wasn't just going on a rant against Israel. He doesn't rant. God speaks truth. <clears throat> Is it true of us today? Now, before we go any farther, we, we need to, I need to make a clarification here. A very, I need to make something very, very clear. Love is an emotion. Love is not just an emotion. It sounds contradictory, but it's not. Love, there is an emotion that humans have called love. But love is not just that emotional feeling that we get. Can we can we agree? Can we agree on that? Yeah. If you if you are if you have been married for any length of time, if you have had children for any length of time, you know this. Okay? When when you know the boys are fighting like cats and dogs and driving driving me up the wall, I'm not feeling all lovey dovey. Okay? I'm not. But I, I choose to love. Part of the reason why so many marriages fall apart is because people say, oh, well, I'm not in love with them anymore. It's not just an emotion. It's a choice. And it's a choice that affects other choices we make and how we make those choices. <laughs> I 
So let's look at how God describes love. Because really, if we, we want to know what love is, we should ask the one who is love and who tells us what it is. Starting in verse 4, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not selfishly seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Notice what love isn't described as. An emotion. A feeling. Everything that Paul wrote in these just three little verses. Remember, Paul's inspired by God. This isn't just some guy writing a blog somewhere. Everything he writes here are choices to be made. We make a choice not to envy. We make a choice not to be rude. We make a choice not to rejoice in evil, but to rejoice in the truth. We make a choice to believe and hope and endure. All those things are choices. And all those things describe love. This isn't the, the, the world's version of some unrealistic, sappy, emotion-driven love that's been filled with action and adventure. And then, at the, and then right after the movie, they sit down at dinner and say, you know what, I'm bored, I'll see you later. God's love is a love that chooses love. It's a love that chooses to be in service to the king. It springs from gratitude for what's been done for us and faith in the promises he has given to us. Just before chapter 13, which Chapter breaks in the Bible are always kind of a little weird. But just before chapter 13 starts, Paul writes how, how God has given apostles and prophets and teachers and miracles and gifts of healings and helps and administrations and varieties of tongues. Talking about all these, all these gifts that, that God has given. And then in verse 31, he says that earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet, that means but. If, we see, if you see an, an and yet or however, this is a big neon sign that says but. Paul says desire the best gifts, but. Now I'm going to show you a more excellent way. I'm going to show you a better way. And this is where we start talking about love. Love is the better way. Love is the more excellent way. Because all those gifts, all those fancy things are, are great. They're good. But they're only good if they have love. Love spurs us to action for God's glory. And it spurs us to action to help our fellow man. I witnessed this yesterday at the gift shop. <coughs> Where so many people who were either here or elsewhere are helping this event to happen. Both, both Danielle and I could not have been here at the same time if if Justin Willis had not come and watched the boys for us. It's not, it, it wasn't just the people here who were helping. It was all the people who enabled that to happen. The people who may, may not have been able to be here yesterday, but who have been working for days and weeks and months to make, to make sure that this happened. There's a lot more than we see. And I'm truly convinced that that was done out of love for God and for each other and, and for our community. In 
13, verse 13, Paul writes, And, and now by faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these here, these is love. This is more than just a catchphrase. This, this is more than just a, a nice saying that looks good on a magnet on the fridge. How we choose to love ourselves, how we choose to love others, and how we choose to love God will affect and infect every area of our lives and show us for who we truly are. See, when, when we choose to, to love God, we even the even the smallest things, even the most seeming, seemingly insignificant things, have enormous worth. We have enormous worth. Our works have enormous worth that we cannot measure. Not because we're so good and we did so great, but because he's so good and he's so great. And there are times where it is difficult to accept that choice of love. Where we might look at someone else and say, oh, well, they're, they're obviously on fire for God. Why can't I feel like that all the time? I have friends like this. They make me feel kind of bad. But it's not about the emotion. It's about the choice to serve and to love the king. If we have difficulty with this, we need to tell us. Most of us here are sitting next to someone that we know and like and trust. Usually people sit, you know, relatively close to their friends or family. You know someone here that you can talk to. And if you can't talk to anyone, come up and talk to me. But if you're feeling that difficulty, that, that crunch of, how can, I, how can I do this better? Can I do this better? What's, what's, what's this really look like? Then ask for prayers. Our God is good. He provides for our needs. And if you haven't been his, if you're not in that relationship, if you haven't chosen to serve the king yet, then what stops us? Because when we, when we choose to go under the service of the king, then we have something to be thankful for. We have a foundation of faith to stand on. And we have love that has true and full me. So if we are able, if anyone can help you, won't you let them know while we sing?